Horny, come here. I need you for some bullshit. Police, a strange horny ocean man is on my lawn. Let's get into season five a little bit. I'm, I'm excited about it. I've gotten to see the first episode. And, you know, obviously we don't want to give too much away. But I, I really like where things start for Beth and Jerry. I feel like at the end of last season... When we, when we meet Space Beth, I, I was worried that home world Beth, whether she's a clone or not, was going to be like, well, I want to go to space too and, and want to leave the family behind. But I feel like they've kind of reinvested in each other a little bit or they're, they're willing to work uh, together, mm. which is, is a good thing. I don't know. Were you guys surprised by, by that angle for them this season? A little bit, but I was I happy it. to see it. Sorry, go you go. Ahead, no, no, no. <laughs> Oh, you're so cute. You're like a married couple. <laughs> you go, honey. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I think it's really fun. I love the I love the direction that that uh, Justin and Dan have Beth and Jerry going this season. Um, it's always been kind of like one of my favorite parts of the show is to see like where their relationship has gone, and I think it takes like a really cool turn. I also I also like I mean remembering some of the episodes now. I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's, that's cool. I like that part. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a refresher in in that. First first episode uh we we get to sort of see i mean summer kind of gets a whole quest of her own we only get to see yeah. bits and pieces of it yes yeah, but yeah. she she kind of kills it i feel like she's probably better suited at this than 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 morty is honestly <laughs> <Don't> you know <laughs> <laughs> but what yeah, yeah. like thinking back what's what's in store for her this season what's in store for summer oh i mean i think there's a lot of that that goes on you know i, mm-hmm. I think uh in general being a teenage girl nowadays can be a lot of trying to figure out what your place is in the world and how to give yourself your own agency. Um, And I think Summer is starting to really find her way in that within the family dynamic. It's funny to watch. Like I I went back and rewatched the very first episode initially. And it was just this reminder that at the beginning, you know, we meet the family and it feels like you kind of understand what role they're going to play in the show. They're always going to be like, oh, here they go again. Like (laughs) the way they've been integrated into everything so thoroughly it's just it's kind of mind-blowing i i don't yeah. do you have are, are you guys surprised ever about how far the show has evolved with these characters and how far it's taken them totally 100 yeah percent. I, yeah only because it's, it's more so and more so every season like mm-hmm. what happens in five and then we just finished recording six mm-hmm. and um it just kind of keeps getting taken to the next level and yeah i totally agree with you um hmm. It is interesting to look back at the beginning and see where all the characters were. Well, we yeah. also recorded that a really long time ago, right? That show was written 10 mm-hmm. years ago. And I think there's something really lovely and unique about we jumped time a lot and like the world progressed a lot <laughs> from, <laughs> from 2011 to 2021, right? We've been through like a pandemic, the Me Too movement, Black Lives Matter. Like there's been so a really interesting president, like so many. <laughs> That's so one way many to put things. it. <laughs> really interesting. Really interesting. Trying to stay neutral. I'm trying to stay neutral. Okay. <laughs> trying to stay neutral. I don't like politics. You gotta take a but, like, stand, Spencer. You gotta take I a can't, stand. I can't do it. I'm only a feminist. <laughs> I'm only a feminist. That's it. My body, my choice. Okay. Anyway, but I, but I think that it's been lovely to have only four seasons, right? Because so, because in some ways they were able to reflect so much of the mm-hmm. change that happened that now we have these really lovely, lovely three dimensional female characters that we haven't necessarily seen before. I mean, there's been a push for that, but but they started off a little bit two dimensional in some ways, or or totally, you know, Beth's character was focused on how to please her father so much or that the dysfunction of that relationship. And that grew Mm -hmm. so much more throughout that, that like Beth now has two Beths, you know, (laughs) Beth has two Beths, two different, totally life choice Beths. And it's awesome. You know? And Um, and can we say either way, do we see more space Beth? (laughs) I, I don't know. I mean, all I I know, we worked on a show with Morlock and Key. We're not allowed to spoil anything. There are such a, yeah, just curiosity over what will happen. So I heard from that one episode that was leaked a couple of years ago somehow. I don't know. <laughs> it's the aired on April Fool's Day. No, no, that was different. No, there oh, was like yeah. totally a leaked episode that like people were watching on like Pornhub or something. You know, it's like <laughs> it's totally, and it was like it was like a mixed cut that wasn't like fully finished. Yeah, you don't remember oh, this? I didn't hear about that. Yeah. No, we, uh, they got in trouble. I don't know who got it leaked, but yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, right. You don't remember that? Well, I, it was on Reddit. It was on Reddit. It was all, it over, was all Reddit. over Reddit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's all over Reddit. I don't. I don't do Reddit. 
<laughs> yeah, it's probably better not to. At the beginning of quarantine, I was like, oh my God, we're never going to get a new episode of television ever again. How are they going to film anything? <laughs> but I always had hope that maybe like animation could happen at the very yeah. least. How, yeah. how has the process of recording and working on the show changed for you guys over this last year? So it started out at the very beginning of the pandemic with them mailing us each like a little microphone in a box. <laughs> we were just doing pickups for past seasons. And so you, you know, they said, just like hang blankets and do the best you can. And so I took the lower bunk bed of my son's bunk bed with duvets and every pillow <laughs> stacked up like poker chips and Harry Potter books. And then the microphone and like in the dark and you're trying to, you know, figure out how to keep the sound good. But then you also have like dogs and children on the other side of the duvet cover. Mm -hmm. So then it was, um, seven moving blankets duct taped to a play tent. And then, um, Finally, when we were moving into recording full episodes, um, I got an actual sound booth that I put together in my house. It's the same one that's sitting behind Chris. You can see it right there. We both have the same one. And I was going to ask. Yeah. <laughs> and, then it, and then it actually has like great sound and there's like real foam inside. And, and, and so, yeah, it was, it was just super fun. It was, it felt so lucky to be able to still get to go to work and feel creative and do something and to also have some you know, laughter and joy of getting mm. to read Rick and Morty scripts. Cause for us, it's just as fun as like, you know, getting to watch them for the first time is getting to read the episode for the first time and to get to go through like a whole season of Rick and Morty over the pandemic was, was quite a gift. And Chris, I mean, yeah, I was getting a look at the, the booth behind you. It's quite something. It's pretty big. <laughs> it looks nice. Does wow. it have every amenity of, of going into the studio and recording there? Is there somebody to hand you water in between takes? <laughs> there's, a, there's a robot that comes with it. Oh, good. All that. Yeah. Wait, you got a um, water robot? I, yeah. Did you not buy that? That was an option. I thought, I thought microphone stand and blue foam over pink foam was the only options. I didn't get the water robot. <laughs> you know what? I might've gotten like a VIP offer. I don't I, know. I'm just really thirsty. <laughs> right Did you now. get the blue foam too? Okay. So I actually, <laughs> asked the, pink foam, but the pink foam, the only person that's ever ordered pink foam before was Mariah Carey. And <laughs> I really wanted the pink foam, but the problem was, is it was going to be an extra three weeks and we did not um, have, so I actually got the blue foam. You and wanted I, pink. I love it. It's great. Yeah. It's great, but I would have loved the pink, um, mostly for my my daughter, um, who's four, and that would I think she would. I just that was really the reason. But yeah, there was like there's like ten or twelve. It's like a dozen color choices. Lots of really? Colors. Well, it's foam. It can come in many different colors. I guess so, right? It's not standard. Spencer, did blue. you get to? Do you get to pick a color then or? <laughs> I I don't like recording at home. Uh, so I I always go into a booth, but it's very, it didn't really change much. It's the, one of the most least touchy, mm -hmm. interactive <laughs> jobs you can have, right? Like you, you walk yourself. in, you don't right. sit, you don't, nobody's there. You go into the, and I've been recording from New York anyway. So I've always been alone with like people talking to me in the headphones for the last four years. Um, and on occasion, I'll go into LA. Like I'll go into the studio in LA, which is really great too. Yeah. So sometimes like I'll take a trip to LA and then I'll do like three episodes while I'm there, but nobody's there anymore. They're just mm -hmm. on the headphones or like on a screen somewhere and you talk to them and it's fine. Like it's not any different than kind of doing this, um, to be honest, except I'm in a I'm just in a studio and I don't have to worry about levels. Like I can't, apparently some voice actors get really good. They get their own booth. They never come in. <laughs> they just know when they're going to scream and they move the level down. And I'm like, I, I can't do that. Like I just want, you need someone else to do that part. Like I just want to be acting. I just want to be like feeling things, you know? I agree. <laughs> the levels are the hardest part, but I do Rick and Morty in the studio, in the booth. This is just for, mostly for auditions. And then a, a few shows I'll record from here, but well, mostly I go into the booth too. Cause yeah, it's hard to keep up with a game on the mic. Mm -hmm. you know? I think now one of my special skills is gaining up and gaining down. Wow. I know. <laughs> like Ricky, do you need me to gain up a little bit? And I feel very professional. <laughs> yeah, no, you should. And I've heard that this is a skill that people get eventually. Totally. Where you have to gain for what, for what level of scream or, you know, if you're going to raise your voice or start yelling at someone, you're like, okay, now I know I need to be at approximately nine o'clock on the game. Yeah. Um, have not gotten so professional at the rest of the process, which they'll be like, <laughs> finally, I'm like, Ricky, can you just take over my screen, please? So I just screen share and he just does the whole record. Oh, idea of like us having completed an entire session. And then I don't 
you know, upload it correctly is oh, yeah. terrifying. Yeah. Cause that's to be in like 48 and like the other thing and the 24 and like, you know, listen. yeah, very early on, there was one session that we recorded that we didn't know if we had it. And it was like, oh, I, God. but it, it all worked out. Sounds like season five, you guys all deserve audio engineer credits as well. I, I mean, no, definitely no. not for me. No, no. Sarah, just Sarah. Booth, I did like a deep dive into building my own sound booth and I thought <laughs> A month that that's what I was going to do. And I learned more about like bass traps and green glue and clips and like all these things. And then I talked to a vocal engineer who was like, no, you're going to get like 90% of the way there. And then you're not going to get the final 10 and it's not going to work. And you're going to have like three levels of drywall in this. It's not, no, just no. So you hired somebody. So that will then I ordered the vocal booth that's sitting behind. Me. Oh, oh, you were going to do right. it totally independently. Oh, totally. The vocal booth. Like, wow. I did like a deep dive research on yeah. how build it and what you needed and how to get the best acoustics and talk to like different sound companies and finally somebody I talked to was like uh what are you gonna do no you're not <laughs> <laughs> did you assemble could... the booth yourself did I yes I did not by myself I She's had very capable I'm very I it's very heavy I did not do it all alone but I I did I was part of it and uh, you know it was, it was exciting it felt very it's very um yeah you feel very accomplished at the end of having assembled it, the booth. It's like know. an Ikea project then, kind of. <laughs> oh, it's, Ikea is a piece of cake. Compared yeah, to like, yeah. I'm, I'm so, I paid for installation and it was this good sized man and his good sized son and they were working their butts off and I have never been so happy with that, the way I spent that thousand dollars to have the booth yeah. assembled for me, you know. Working a lot longer than me though, Chris. I just assembled it on my own. <laughs> Sarah's <laughs> hard like, hat on. Ooh. <laughs> a tool belt hard hat show. like well, <laughs> I was gaining up and gaining down the whole time <laughs> whole time yeah I know I love you. listen I yeah I'm like I don't want to do that I, I, I'm i gonna be a diva and I'm gonna say <laughs> I want my sound engineer there to do it for me because they do it better and that is go. true that is something you can look forward to in season five Beth may have very odd gainsings so. <laughs> <laughs> we can work this out Stop trying to kill each other. New Rick and Morty starting Sunday, June 20th at 11 p.m.